the 16th of April, 1853, three steam locomotives, Sahib, Sultan, and Sindh. Hold 400 elite guests, seated in 14 coaches, from Bori Bunda to Thani. A distance of 34 miles. India joined League of Nations having railways. 16 months later, on the 15th of August, 1854. The first train off the East Indian Railway Company, puffed from Havra to Hooghly. Covering a distance of 24 miles. This very humble beginning off, different, regional railways, eventually took the shape of, a monumental organization, to become the lifeline of the nation, and after the independence, it was titled, the Indian Railways. The East Indian Railway Company, one of the pioneers of the railways in India, was amalgamated into the Indian Railways, when the railways were restructured in 1951-52. Though, the East Indian Railway Company ceased to exist, its place in history, could not be forgotten. Many of its locomotives, performed well beyond the recommended lifespan of 40 years. Messrs. Kitson, Thompson, and Hewitt son of the UK, in 1855, built a steam locomotive for the East Indian Railway Company. The engine, bearing number 22, entered active service and outperformed many. After about 40 years in service, the engine was christened Fairy Queen in 1895. However, the reasons for this unique title are not clear. It could have been that the engine performed without trouble and gave the company a fair deal, or maybe, when, compared to the mightier engines of the EIR, the smaller locomotive was, worthy of the title of the Queen. Whatever be the reason, the Fairy Queen served the EIR for almost 53 years. She was withdrawn from active service in 1908 and was put on a pedestal outside the Havra railway station. Later, she was sent to a railway training school at Chandalsi, where she was admired by many. Even after remaining inactive for 63 years, the Fairy Queen became a star attraction once again in 1971. She was the first exhibit off the National Rail Museum in New Delhi. At this time, steam locos were being phased out fast. More efficient, diesel, and electric locos, with much higher power, started hauling the trains. Steam engines were now finding their way to the junkyards. It was December 1995, when the last broad gauge steam locomotive off the Indian Railways pulled a train. The Black Beauties, that served, and, dominated the hearts of the Indians, from 1853 to 1995, saw a gradual demise. However, the wheeze, the thud, the whistle, and the bellowing steam of the locos, continued to haunt steam enthusiasts. They were the most dismayed, at the agonizing silence, and the absolute immobility of the black beauties, that had served the nation majestically, and relentlessly, for 142 years, and laid the foundations of a modern state. Unlike the British, who valued, the railways in India, only from a commercial and strategic point of view, the Indian Railways on the other hand, valued, the sentiments of the steam lovers. It decided to build, maintain and preserve some of the steam locomotives, in perfect working order. These steam locos, being a vital part of the rail heritage of India. The management of the National Rail Museum, and some other member of the Indian Railways, decided to bring back to life, the prima donna, of their fleet, 
the fairy queen, that had captivated hearts of many. The star attraction of the National Rail Museum was sent to Piramba Workshop of Southern Railways in 1996, where it was to be completely overhauled and revived for work on a main line. To revive one of the world's oldest steam locomotives is in no way an easy task. Chances of encountering failures and repeated failures are always more than expected. And at times, out of frustration, the project very often gets abandoned. But, it was the willpower of the most dynamic managers, engineers, and workers of the Indian Railways that worked wonders and put India on the world map by making Fairy Queen of 1855 built to blow smoke and puff steam again on the track. After remaining inactive for 89 years, the Fairy Queen was back in service in 1997. The historic resurgence of the Fairy Queen was linked to the development in tourism in India. The resurrected glamorous beauty, much to the delight of steam enthusiasts, began its first commercial trip on the 18th of October, 1997. On 13th January 1998, it deservingly got the title off. The world's oldest working locomotive in the Guinness Book of World Records. Since its first commercial trip in 1997, the Fairy Queen has been running special, seasonal trips for tourists and steam enthusiasts alike every year. A legend in itself, the Fairy Queen runs between two historic cities of Delhi and Alwa. Though, the Fairy Queen is the oldest working steam locomotive in the world. In her appearance, she can compete with any of the newly manufactured locomotives, and in performance, the young beauty of 152 years is able to unleash her latent power. Traveling from Delhi to Alwa, the Fairy Queen travels a distance of 148 kilometers in about six hours halting at five stations in between, for water and coal replenishment. The railways treat the passengers as their esteemed guests, who deserve the best of hospitality, attention, and services. As the tourists enter the train, they are garlanded, and a tillic is applied to their forehead. As a mark of respect, the railway staff invites one of the traveling guests to act as a guard, to wave a green flag, to signal the departure of the train. At the mere turn of a knob and a shift in the lever, the latent power of steam, entrapped in the beautiful Fairy Queen, becomes a visible force. Two 12 inches diameter pistons develop 130 horsepower, imparting 22-inch strokes to the connecting rods and the crankshafts that turn the giant 1800mm wheels. The two front, two driving, and two trailing wheel engine, the Fairy Queen, weighing 26 tons, carrying two tons of coal and 3,000 litres of water in its underslung tank, 
gradually starts gaining momentum to cruise at a speed of 40 km per hour. Apart from a 60-seat chair car, an attached service car is a part of the train. The service car has a very neat and tidy kitchen that caters to the needs of the tourists. The moment the train leaves Delhi station, the catering staff swings into action, and throughout the journey, they are most attentive to each guest's need. The service car has a generator to supply electric power to the train. Earlier, the Fairy Queen had a hand braking system. Now she has been equipped with an air braking system. The friendly railway staff allow the enthusiastic tourists to travel inside the open driver's cabin off the Fairy Queen to experience the exhilarations of standing with the engine drivers and to have a first-hand experience of running and controlling the steam locomotive and the train. Indeed, for many, it is a lifetime opportunity to be in the open cabin off a running steam engine where one is permitted to control the knobs, to blow whistles, cautioning the passerby or the heritage train that is approaching fast. By the time the train halts at next station for water replenishment, the catering staff is ready to serve hot soup before lunch. As the train chugs a bit further, Indian and continental lunch for the vegetarians and the non-vegetarians is served. The variety of food that are served definitely make it difficult for one to decide what to choose from, and what to leave. And of course, the courteous caterers do not hesitate, serving the delicacies again and again, and as many times one wants. After lunch, it is time to relax and enjoy the unfolding scenic beauty of the countryside while the train is running at 40 km per hour. The Fairy Queen before it reaches Awa, the guests are served tea or coffee to their liking. The destination Alwa, a traditional welcome awaits the guests there. Behind this very comfortable, enjoyable and of course a memorable excursion, 
lies the soul, the beautiful fairy queen. The EIR number 22, this very steam engine, 150 years ago, old, trains from Hovra to Rani Gunge, a distance of 121 miles. The fairy queen, that hauled, the Indians, in the most wretched conditions, 150 years ago, today, the same locomotive, though, a British engine by origin, totally overhauled, by the Indian engineers, hauls, the Indians and the foreigners alike, in world-class comforts, without any class distinction. Every successful run off the Fairy Queen, is a tribute to those managers, engineers, and workers of the Indian Railways, who reclaimed, what otherwise would have been, a lost glory. The reciprocating stroke of the pistons, the wheeze, the thud, the whistle, and the expanding steam, that comes out of this engine, the rattling noise, and the long trail of smoke, left by this locomotive, is loudly repeating only one saga. Salute the Indian Railways. Salute the Indian Railways, carrying the sentiments of the nostalgic, it runs numerous steam locomotives, and the Fairy Queen, despite the cost factor.